The Duchi Mix is the first available budget phone that boasts a front almost entirely covered by the screen. What Xiaomi made mainstream with the Mi Mix is made affordable to everyone by Duchi. The Duchi Mix is available starting from 180 bucks and we put it to the test for more than a week. I'm Christopher for CMM with the full review. The Duchi Mix has been provided to us by Banggood. The link to the shop is located down below in the video description. When you order the mix, you get it in a simple packaging that contains everything you need for a start. There is a power supply, a micro USB cable, a SIM pin, a protective case, a quick start guide and a replacement screen protector. The Duchi Mix is a premium phone judging by the design and build quality. The build quality really is excellent and the phone is really sturdy, which is impressive considering that the rear is made from glass. Our unit also has no issues with rattling buttons or ugly gaps. The glossy blue glass of the Aurora Blue Edition looks just stunning and so does the matte blue metal frame. In the end, the Duchi Mix feels great thanks to the slightly curved metal frame and the 2.5D edges of the front and rear glass. Both the front and rear glass are made from Gorilla Glass 5, which means those panels are very scratch resistant. The Duchi Mix, considering its 5.5 inch screen, is rather compact. In width, it is of course as large as any other 5.5 inch phone, but it is not as tall. Height actually is more like on a 5 inch phone. Still, the phone at 190 grams is surprisingly heavy, which probably is caused by the solid metal chassis inside, which makes the phone so sturdy. The only room for critics we can find is that they put the blue paint of the metal frame over the plastic parts inside the metal frame, which are supposed to buffer forces in case of an impact. This might lead to the paint peeling off in case you drop the phone. The screen in this price range is a huge step forward. The missing thick border above the screen doesn't only make the phone smaller, it also looks great. The upper bezel isn't as narrow as on the Mi Mix, but please consider the huge price difference. The fact that the screen only offers a 720p resolution is a bit disappointing and yep, you do notice this, but only in the beginning. After one or two days of usage, you will get used to it and then don't notice it anymore. In exchange, a Samsung Super AMOLED screen is what you get and that's totally worth the reduced screen resolution. AMOLED screens look just stunning with their deep blacks and popping colors and that's the case even with the cheaper panel used inside the Duji Mix. It's a pleasure to watch movies on that thing and thanks to mirror vision you can make colors look more realistic in case you don't like the candy look of it. The only downside is that there is a heavy loss in contrast under bright sunlight, but still you can easily read the screen's content. The touch panel they use is great even though it's just a 5.tp. The touch resolution is very high which enables fine movements with no stutter and increases accuracy a lot. There also is just a very minor input delay and the screen glass has awesome gliding properties. What's missing though is an oleophobic coating which means you will see smudges very fast and that also applies to the rear panel. Again, considering the price, the Duchi Mix packs impressive specs. You get a brand new Helio P25 SoC, a 16 nanometer chipset that boasts a whopping 8 Cortex A53 cores clocked at 2.5 GHz, as well as a powerful dual core Mali T880 GPU. In Antutu, the SoC with 63k points might not reach impressive results, but let us tell you that it still feels faster than a Helio X20, which is surprising. This becomes quite obvious when throwing demanding games at it. Contrary to the Helio X20, the Helio P25 for some reason handles all high-end games like Unkilled, Asphalt Extreme or even Gear Club smoothly at highest graphic settings. Anyone into gaming will for sure enjoy the Duchi Mix. In addition, there are 64 GB of memory and 4 or 6 GB of LPDDR4 XRAM. Both memory types reach decent speeds and the same applies to microSD cards which can be used if you can live without dual SIM support. The mix also packs all important sensors. The gyroscope and compass in our tests did work just fine. What's missing however is a status LED and we don't really know why. 
The fingerprint scanner does work well and halfway fast, but there is a bug which disables the sensor once the phone hits deep sleep. So to unlock it after a long time in standby, you first need to wake it up using the power button. The 2G Mix is shipped with Android 7.0, the security patch is from June 2017 and thus up to date. This time they don't use vanilla Android but do GOS instead. This is their own custom ROM based on FreemeOS, which offers a redesigned user interface. The new design applies to the settings app, the notification center and quick settings as well as the launcher. What's nice is that they use a launcher that offers an app drawer with alphabetic sorting. The launcher seems a bit overloaded with eye candy out of the box, but this can all be disabled. What can't be disabled unfortunately is the news page of the launcher, but that's not much of a big deal since it's not self-refreshing and thus doesn't use up any data if you don't use it. The launcher offers tons of customization options, there is a do-it-yourself configurator in which you can change pretty much everything about how the launcher looks and feels. Also there is support for ready-made themes and a marketplace where you can download wallpapers as well as the aforementioned themes. Interesting additional features offered by DoGOS are various gesture control options as well as a one-hand mode which makes it easier to use the Duchi Mix with just one hand. There also is a parallel space feature which allows you to clone apps such as Facebook to use two different accounts on one phone. Regarding optimization, DoG made a huge step forward with the latest update. The system now runs smooth for the most part and just for short periods has hiccups which if they tend to last longer can be solved with a reboot. The app compatibility has been greatly improved too, Netflix now works flawlessly, the only app we still have issues with is AIDA64. What should be improved with one of the next updates is navigation through the system. You potentially could use the home button to entirely replace the on-screen buttons, but there is just one flaw that prevents you from actually doing this. There is no way to use the home button for app switcher or as the home button at the very same time. So if you use the home button only, one of those functions will always be missing. Duchi should enable users to trigger home by double tapping to solve that issue. Reception quality of the Duchi Mix is situated within the good mid-range. We sometimes had some issues getting a data connection in areas with weak signal, but besides of that everything worked well. Band 20 LTE is supported. The Mix also offers ABGN Wi-Fi and reached 64 Mbit per second. That's not the maximum possible, but still okay. Signal strength is decent and the speed only drops to 42 Mbit per second, one floor below the router. The GPS was working very well during the testing period, the signal strength is very good and fixed times are short, accuracy is very good and we never experienced any issues during navigation or GPS tracking. The media speaker sounds ok, but it could offer more loudness and basses. The headphone jack basically does deliver a clear signal, but is a bit bass heavy. The telephonic quality to our surprise is excellent, the earpiece sounds great and the microphone is really good too. The main camera isn't bad, but still has some weaknesses. There is a lot of potential, but here and there it could be more optimized. At daylight you get very decent pictures with lots of detail and a good sharpness. Shutter time is short. What the camera struggles with is low light. Here it generates lots of noise. This issue has been improved a little with a recent update, but still isn't completely gone. What we also noticed is that colors often look washed out. Doji should really try to optimize this with future updates. Bokeh mode for the most part is unusable, which is typical for budget dual cameras. It just creates that round blurred area that you can change in size, but no real bokeh effect with shape detection. You can create decent shots under some circumstances, but in general Duchi could have left out the dual camera to save a couple bucks. Videos can be recorded with up to Ultra HD resolution and deliver a halfway decent quality. Sadly, video recordings do stutter, which also applies to Full HD recordings. 
We hope this will be fixed soon. Audio quality is very decent. The 5 megapixel front camera sucks. It is okay for video chats, but nothing more. The battery life in the beginning was very bad with just half a day of usage time. But with the recent update there have been massive improvements and as power users we now reach the evening. With less intense usage getting through the night is possible as well. Sadly there is no really fast charging. With 1 hour 45 minutes from 20 to 100% charging time is not slow but with PE plus fast charging it could have been much quicker. Verdict. Hardware wise, the Duchi Mix starting at 170 to 180 bucks is a great deal. Duchi built a great phone there. The main weaknesses are software issues, but Duchi have shown that they care about those issues and working hard to fix them. After the recent update, the Duchi Mix is usable as a daily driver and we had fun with it thanks to the powerful SoC and the gorgeous AMOLED screen. So all in all we can give a purchase recommendation for this one and hope that Duchi will continue to make the phone even better with updates. So that's all for this video, a shop link and more information is located down in the video description. I was Christopher for CMM, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.